Hi and welcome back to the bench. So we're going to go ahead and build this circuit now, um, ugly style, uh, or, or Manhattan, depending which way you look at it. It's using SMD, so it's more ugly than Manhattan. But anyway, um, so we're going to build up this circuit uh, up on an SO8 uh, mounted on one of uh, those breakout expansion boards. I'll show you in a second. And I'm going to show you how, to, how I go ahead and do something like this uh, using the least amount of uh, jumper wires, obviously, and uh, just using kind of mid, -air, you know, free air, <clears throat> open air hanging connections and whatnot. Um, as you can see, we've got uh, this particular circuit's a power on re reset circuit. In fact, it, all it is is just a delay circuit. So when five volts supply is applied, it's going to delay the rise of the output by a certain amount of time. And um, there's a small bug with this particular circuit. It looks like the actual, it looks like the LM393 has a sort of inconsistent power on state as power is applied. So of course you can imagine that we've got plus five volts to both of these guys and as power is turned on, you're gonna end up getting <coughs> um, the internal state of the op amp uh, oscillating as the power rail comes to a certain point or raises or rises to a certain point. I'm not sure what that is, but it's going to rise up to five volts, so somewhere in there it's going to stabilize. So while it's doing that, of course, the output's going wild and wacky all over the place. Um, meanwhile, you've got your five volts coming through your divider here for both a reference, uh, I should say, but both a reference, pardon me, here. So it's um, it's set to one third of ground, uh, one third of your rail, pardon me. And um, you, the actual measured value here, which is going to be basically half uh, our reference, so because of this uh, capacitor, this is going to rise up, basically an RC circuit here, so it's going to rise up slowly, uh, fed by this uh, by this resistor here from uh, your reference, which is in this case just the power rail. So there's a few things here that are kind of eh, uh, but we're going to go build it anyway. It seems to work relatively well enough that I'm okay with this. Uh, it might jump around also a little bit, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. And um, that's that. I mean, this is just here to guarantee that when this circuit powers up, it powers, uh, it powers. I should say, when the circuit whole system powers up, this circuit will guarantee that the system stays in a pre or initializes to a certain state. There's a bit of oscillation there. Maybe I'll drop a, a, a cap on there to keep it low or something, and uh, or something. I, I'm not sure yet. I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to solve that, but I'm not going to bother about it for the moment. So let's get uh, let's get over to the uh, the actual circuit and the chips involved and. Uh, Let's go ahead and build that sucker. All right, so here's the setup on the bench. We've got our LM393. And uh, I've already done, uh, I've already pre -soldered, soldered it onto this breakout board. And if you haven't seen these before, these are some breakout boards that are built by uh, QRPME, or you can get them at QRPME. I don't remember the, uh, the gentleman's call sign, but it's up on there. And he sells these boards in numerous uh, set of numerous different configurations. Here's a, a dual inline package version, and here's a SO20. 16? SO20, 16. Uh, SO20, pardon me. Ah, 16. I can't speak. Um, version. So essentially these things are really handy if you're going to uh, do any kind of Manhattan or ugly construction where you're going to be um, taking one of these guys and you know gluing it onto a, some copper clad board or something like that. Obviously nothing this small, but you know, that, that's that, that thing. And the, the big thing is that these things are isolated on the back, so of course you're not going to get any bridges from the front to the back. And normally the copper clad that you saw, you glue or solder onto is um, uh, a ground plane, so you obviously don't want shorts that. And um, so that's uh, what I'm going to be using for this particular uh, soldering uh, exercise right now. And um, so if you remember the uh, diagram, there is a uh, voltage divider, uh, two 1 meg resistors with a uh, cap on the uh, low side. And that's going to act as our um, our 50% uh, target voltage for this power on uh, reset circuit. So if uh, you know your pin out of these, so pin four is ground, pin eight is V in or VCC or whatever it's called, uh, V plus, V minus. And we wanted to have a feedback, or I should say we want, we want our reference voltage to come in on pin three, which is the inverting 
uh, sorry, not, not inverting in, input, pardon me, of this uh, comparator. Now to do that, we're going to obviously have to bridge from V plus to V minus uh, with a uh, resistor bridge. Now I happen to, a resistor divider, divider, pardon me, I happen to already have done part of the work. I set up a uh, piggyback style with the resistor piggybacked uh, pardon me, this, uh, the cap piggybacked on the 1 meg resistor, so that's a 500 nano farad cap. So what we're going to do is oh, we're going to go ahead and solder that between um, oops, I'm put that back in frame, there we go. We're going to solder that between uh, pin 4 and 3, and that'll form the low end of our voltage divider. So we're just going to go do that really quickly. There we go, done piece of cake and that's reflowed that's reflowed fairly nicely onto there Let's see if we can get that a little bit closer anyway you can see that up there so the next thing we're going to do uh, and I was debating I'm debating whether to just have the one meg resistor I think I'm going to do that I'm just going to pop the one meg resistor right off of there so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and we will drop a little bit of solder on on this side right here. Seal the deal on that part of the resistor, and then we're just going to go ahead and drop. Try and get the right angle for this. And drop the resistor standing up tomb style, tombstone style. Now, of course, normally you don't want this when you're manufacturing because tombstone components are very bad, that means they don't have a connection, but in Manhattan design it's fantastic. You can build upwards as well as sideways, so life is grand. And, oops, there we go, done. So now that guy is going to stand straight up, and what we'll do is we'll put a bridge wire from, um, from the resistor here up to V plus here. But we'll do that last. Um, so now we've got a slightly more trickier one. Let's go tackle that uh, that uh, three resistor divider. So on second second thought, I kind of looked at this and I went, oh, "Shit, I'm going to have to get a wire from here all the way over to here." Um, that's kind of silly. Um, why? Because we can just use a through-hole part to go and make that bridge with the resistor in the middle. So we're going to go and do that. I've already preformed the resistor off camera, so this should be a simple matter of desoldering this guy. Done. And we're going to take this resistor, and we're going to do. Let me adjust this slightly. I'm going to go drop. Um, where is this going? It's going there. Right. Um, I'll just drop a quick blob, blob of solder there. Solder. Uh, solder, solder. Yeah. Don't know how we say it here, but whatever. That's the way, that's the way I say it. Um, and we're going to go and we're going to pin the leg of the resistor here. Of course, when I formed this lead, I didn't think that I was moving that resistor. <laughs> Not a big deal. Just go ahead and hold that in place there. Come down here. Like that. Alright, so now that resistor lead is nice and formed. And what we'll do is we'll come in and tack that down and call it done. There we go. So now we're using the component as part of the actual uh, uh, mechanism for connecting up these pads, which is really handy to have. I mean, using the, the SMD components are nice when you've got two pads that are right next to each other like this, but when you're trying to bridge this kind of gap here, I mean, you know, geez, don't break your head. Just, you know, use something that's larger in this particular case. So one of these through all resistors. So we're going to do the same thing. We have a, a similar problem between pin two and ground. There's a 10K resistor. It's going to go across like this. And yeah, I could, you know, Frankenstein a small wire, but honestly, I'm not going to bother. We'll just use a through hole 10 meg resistor, not 10 meg, 10 kilo, kilo ohm resistor, 10k resistor, and we'll just go ahead and uh, 
and put it right through like this. In fact, we may even do it just on the side, just like that. So I'll form in the leads a little bit and I'll be right back. All right, so here we go. Um, whoopsies. <laughs> Knock everything around, why don't I? Okay, so here is our little 10K resistor and it's set up so that pretty much when I get this in place, it's gonna be just inside of the um, the PCB, the, the, the breakout PCB here. So we're gonna go. There we go. And I'm gonna turn that around so I can get a better angle here. Since I am a lefty, this is easier for me to do on my left hand side. And we'll just tack this guy in right here. And that's all there is to it. And now we need a, um, so now we need two more 10K resistors in series from pad two to pad eight, uh, or plus five, plus five volts in this case, since we're feeding this guy with five volts. So I'm going to go ahead and form that. Um, in this case, what I may do is I may actually bring a SMD resistor out from here. So I'll use my less fat finger. So an SMD resistor up and then bridge, th bridge it through uh, to here with a, uh, another through hole resistor. Um, which probably should be easier to do it that way. So I'll form those up and we'll be right back. All right, so here we are right back again. Now, normally if I was doing this, I have, uh, I have, here, let me go zoom this out a little bit. So I have a nice huge reel of 10K resistors. I got care of my uh, workplace, they're throwing this out. I mean, you can see those, those are uh, 0603s. So they're really not that bad to deal with. Um, oh, back in and out, in and out, in and out. There we go, boom. But um, for this one, I think we're gonna use, uh, because I wanna get a resistor off of here. So um, we're gonna use some 0805s that I have, which are, you know, again, small, but not ridiculously so and will provide a much better um, surface on the top for sol soldering on a resistor that'll jump across here. So we're gonna go do that really quickly. And we will then, oh, let's see, yeah, okay. Oop, is that in frame? Nope, that was gonna be silly. All right, so we'll go ahead, oops. Rearrange on the fly there. All right, so we'll go ahead and just tack that in like that. And that looks, oh, that looks about right. So you can see it standing up there. If you can see it, it's just standing right up there. So we're going to go solder on a 10K from here all the way to. V plus. So we'll go and first form those leads. And we're gonna have it some do something like this roughly. So I don't need, I'm gonna go and form the other side first. Uh, I don't need to worry about shorts on the side because of course both these re two resistors are gonna go to the same place. So in theory I could even just solder it in like that. Um, and you know, maybe, but in this case I can get all the way down to the pads. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. It'll be probably better anyway. So let's go ahead and that. Of course, the hardest part of doing this is figuring out exactly how to bend the darn thing so that it uh, does what you want it to do. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna just nip a bit of this off right away since I don't need that much. Uh, oh, that's probably not quite as good a bend as I would have liked. So we'll come in a little bit steeper. Let's see how this is now. Oh yeah, that's good. That's excellent. So we'll just nip off the tip there, get this a little bit, this lead a bit shorter. And now we just have to figure out where to nip off the other side. So we'll do that right about yeah, there. That 
looks good. Okay. So, we've got this guy here. Now he's going to come in just like this. And on this one, I think I'm going to solder this side first here. Um, just because this side's going to be easier to tack in, then I can move it around. There's a much larger surface area that I'll be soldered onto, so I don't have to worry about um, about breaking the thing or anything like that. Uh, breaking it off while I sort of wiggle it into position over here. Where if you had the resistor done f side first, done the, the resistor side done first, then yeah, you could potentially get that problem. So, whoops. Yeah. Yeah, a little dry there. So just throw a little solder on the soldering iron. And again, this isn't normally you shouldn't normally use solder this way, but you know. Worst case you can always come in afterwards and fix it up. So and the other thing of course is it's not, you know, required for industrial grade usage, so who the heck cares? And no, I don't do this in my day job, so you don't have to worry about really crappy electronics. Or at least not the hardware side of things. The softer side of things is a different question. Alright, so... Alright, we've got that guy now. You can see this bit more in the camera. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, solder this connection right here, because right now this guy's just kind of floating. Uh, and maybe we'll go back and just really quickly do this side here afterwards. But remember, always tack in one side before doing the other one, because obviously you don't want to have one side, well, both sides floating. Uh, and usually I start with the solid connection first, or the more solid of the connections, if there is one. Alright, let's, let's do this. Mm, there we go. There we go. So I have the entire thing solid there, and so there you go. So now that's our, um, so we have our three 10K. So we have one 10K here from ground to pin two. And then from pin two, we have two 10Ks in series, 10K resistors in series, wow. And then uh, that's going right through to VN. So then, of course, we're gonna have to solder VN to wherever our plus five source is, and we'll have to ground this here, which is usually a big, no big deal. We'll just usually uh, tie this off with a small piece of, uh, cut off or whatever from a through hole resistor and uh, that'll be perfect. For bypassing, typically you want to bypass as close to the to the, uh, the chip as you can. So in this case, we'll probably bypass from here. And either, what I've done in the past, I've just put a simple uh, SMD capacitor right here and just you know soldered it right here on the edge, sorry, and then one right at the bottom and done. So you can do that. And there's a bunch of different ways. You can use a through hole uh, capacitor as well too. That would work equally fine. Um, so we'll call that one done and um, I think this part is close to finish. Um, the other half of this comparator we're not using now, my understanding is it's good, perfectly fine to leave those uh, floating. Um, maybe not, but what I'll do is I'll leave it like this and we'll see. Uh, worst case, we'll uh, tie those high-low depending on what makes sense. And pin one, of course, is coming off to go out to our part of the circuit that's going to receive the power reset signal. Uh, and that's pulled high by a 5.1K. Um, a 5k1 resistor so uh, which I have right here we have a few three hole jobbies here so well we'll try you know I could probably even just tie that in right now maybe I'll do that maybe I'll maybe I'll just solder that in really quickly uh, so let's go do that do this real time this has not been prepared ahead of time please do not see the one that I prepared previously um, we'll go ahead and grab enough lead so we again we just we're gonna go and do the same kind of thing uh, and again I don't care about any um, bridge or any kind of you know collision there since who cares um, and this one may be really simple we may just put this one right on the board you know right along the board just like that oops our board fall apart fall off not so great okay uh, yeah, actually, I might be able to do that. That'll be, uh, and we'll call that finished. So let's uh, grab that. And we'll have to solve that. Oops, sorry, cut that other side. Your noise in the background, that's my daughter doing whatever my daughter does when I'm not looking. 
which generally means I don't want to know. But anyway, well, there go the uh, side cutters. All right. So, whoops, that's not at all in frame. Okay, there we go. There we go, all right. So we're gonna go and really quickly tack that side in again. Actually, I need a bit of solder because that's not gonna work. Okay, and now we'll just bring this one down. Just like that. That's a smart idea to have a solder iron waving around. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'll come in and just quickly tack this side down and then we'll be ready. There you go. 5.1K pull up resistor. Done. Sold. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So now we have a little module here. This might be a little hot, but whatever. So we have a little module here that we can now use. There we go. We can now use this in the project that I'm working on. And you can see the nice thing about building like building a little circuit like this is it's a nice, you know, it's easy to position. You don't have to think about it too, too hard afterwards. And you can work on it sort of modularize uh, the subsystems. Uh, or at least where it's one circuit or one one uh, IC is concerned. Um, this is one that I did prepare a bit earlier. <laughs> this is the power, <laughs> well, power and uh, and extra stuff. So you've got a, a 15 volt regulator and a 5 volt regulator here. And, and again, both of these tabs are ground, so it comes in. We're going to have your your unregulated input here, like a poker here, unregulated input here goes into 5 volt on regulator, yeah, whatever. Uh, goes into 15 volt regulator here, drops here, so this pad now is 15 volts regulated. Goes into another regulator here and drops down here, which is 5 volts regulated off this pad. You have our two caps to you know decouple that, or at least give it, you know, de remove any ripple that happens to be there. And again, another uh, cap on the input here. And um, you know, you solder these two tabs to the uh, to the copper clad and you're ready to rock and roll. And this is just ends up being a, um, a uh, PFET that I'm going to need, whoops, PFET that I'm going to use for uh, another part of the system. So it's going to be dumping uh, directly on the high side, um, actually from here, so from, from the 15 volt to the uh, to here, and, uh, and, the ga and the gate control is here. So this pin here will be tied uh, to my control part. But anyway, yeah, so this is, you know, this is a bit of an extreme case, but you can build up stuff, and then you've got other ones like here where I may have showed this before, but you know, this is an output stage where you have your resistors and your transistors and whatever. But again, you can build it all up and it's easy to, to sort of move it around and place it exactly where you want. So that's sort of the reason for doing um, them like that. And you don't have to think too far about, oh, if I put something here, there, what's going to happen? So that's that. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, there'll be a few other videos as I uh, assemble this slowly. And um, that's all. Till next time. Catch you later. Cheers.